So in this part, we're going to look at the final stage of writing our email. <clears throat> and we're also going to look at things we want to avoid. It's still part of the content, but this is how we make our request persuasive. So if you remember in our uh, last part, we made our polite request. I was wondering if I could maybe ask for permission for an excused absence. And we said there was something missing. And this is what we're going to call request support. This is something that will support our request. Here are a few examples of request support, uh, which are ineffective. We can try to disarm the recipient and say, I know this class is important, but we can try to prepare the recipient and say, I really need a favor. We can make promises. We can apologize. We can even uh, butter them up a little bit by saying nice things about them. But none of these things are particularly effective and don't really affect your chances of getting what you want. The one request support strategy that is likely to be effective is called the grounder. A grounder introduces the grounds for your request. This is the basis for your request, the reasons for your request. And there are two features of good grounders. Good grounders are both specific and justified. I think specific is clear, but justified means that there is no alternative and it is beyond your control. So let's look at some bad examples. There is something I need to do. Well, that's not specific. What do you need to do? So that would be a poor example. I have a family problem. Again, this is not specific. I have to catch a train at 10 o'clock to go to Amsterdam to take my IELTS test, which begins at 12.30. This is specific, but this is not justified. So why not? Well, justified, if we remember, means that there is no alternative. It's beyond our control. Taking your uh, IELTS test during class in Amsterdam is under your control. It is your choice. You do have an alternative. You can take another test. And so we will say that this is not justified. Here's an example of one that is. I have to go to the service point between 11 and 12 to talk to a member of student support about a letter I received about my health insurance. I hope you can see this is specific and it's justified. You can only go to the service point between 11 and 12. There is no alternative. This is not in your control. And you really do need to, to, to ask somebody about your health insurance. So is it specific? Yes. Is there an alternative? No. Is this beyond your control? Yes. We would say this is justified. So here we have the final piece of our puzzle. We have our salutation. We have our self-introduction. We have our very polite request. Now we have our request support, which is both specific and justified. We have our thanks, we have our leave taking, and then finally, we have our name. There is one part we have yet to address, 
and that is the subject line. The subject line should be related to the content. The content here, we are asking for permission for an excused absence. And therefore, our subject line should be very similar to our content. So there you have it, the perfect email. Before we finish, I would like to give you a couple of words of warning. There are some things you should probably avoid when writing emails, especially when requesting something. And we can divide these things into two groups, intensifiers and aggravators. So let's look at intensifiers. Intensifiers are the opposite of downtoners. A downtoner softens the request, whereas an intensifier makes the request appear bigger. They add pressure to the request and they can be seen as pushy or coercive. Here are some examples. I really need blah, blah, blah. So we can intensify the time and say, I need it now, or I need it as soon as possible or urgently. You can also appear pushy when you say, I'm waiting, I'm waiting for you, I'm waiting for your reply. And you can also seem very pushy when you expect a positive response. So these are intensifiers. Our second category were called aggravators. And in general, an aggravator is something that will get you a negative response in any context. If you accuse the recipient, for example, of something, you're likely to get a negative response. So something like this, I asked you in class, but you didn't respond, is an aggravator. You are not likely to get a positive response from this very negative statement. Similarly, you did not respond to my earlier email is an accusation. People don't like to be accused and they're not willing to be positive once you've taken this negative tone. So in general, we can say you have your rights. You have the right to ask for anything that you want to ask for. But please remember, the recipient also has his rights and he has the right to refuse. It's your job to recognize that asking for something creates an imposition. And it is a strategy for you to do your best to soften the imposition, to soften the request as much as possible to achieve your goal. So as you can see, writing the perfect email is not difficult. All it requires is a little knowledge of the right words and a little bit of strategy to get what you want.